Greetings everyone, Eric here and welcome back to another video. In this one we're going to be taking a look at the STM-01 from Kamika. Okay, so the STM-01 is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. It plugs in through XLR, so you do need some type of uh, audio interface to use this uh, microphone. Uh, they were kind enough to send me this microphone to try out. The audio you're hearing right now is from this microphone. Um, I have the box right here so you can see what the packaging looks like. Um, it also has the specs on the back, which I can sit here and read out to you. Hopefully, I've got my volumes set correct. Uh, so yes, it is a uh, condenser microphone. It uses the cardioid uh pattern and it's only got the one pattern cardioid means it's going to listen to everything up coming in front of it and then it's going to try and reject anything from behind it uh, so that's really nice the frequency response is actually really good it's 20 hertz uh, all the way up to 20 kilohertz so that's really good uh, let's see i'm just looking at whatever is like actually important there's a lot of information on this thing that you could easily look for uh it does obviously use phantom power so you need an audio interface that can deliver phantom power so like i said you're already hearing this thing right now um but what i also did was i decided to try this thing out on uh, my guitar um i don't have an acoustic guitar so i couldn't really give it a tr good try with that but what i did was i plugged um i basically plugged my fender stratocaster uh with seymour duncan hot rail in the uh, uh bridge position and i plugged that into my orange crush pro 120 and i basically recorded a little bit of it and let's bring up uh reaper here and i recorded a few samples um a few of these ones that you see kind of low here these are all clean so this is all done uh with the amp completely clean um and then all this stuff back here is all higher gain stuff so basically we're just gonna have a listen to this and the reason i'm doing this is because it you're already hearing what it sounds like when i talk um so i don't need to really go over that um the one thing i will say is if you look at its um its response or not its response but it's um eq curve that it basically has built in it's mostly flat up until kind of that like 10k hertz area like it has a little bit of a boost around it has a decent boost around 10k and then it looks like a little bit after around like the 16k it's got another little nudge uh so it's definitely designed for your voice and while we're actually here on my computer uh this is what i'm using i'm using uh vst host to get my audio the way you're hearing it now because i'm recording it directly through obs and these are what i'm using to affect it so obviously i have a noise gate on to cut out any background noise when i stop talking or at least for the most part like i, I don't have it super aggressive um but the only thing i have is i actually took my normal eq and i flattened it mostly um all i did was i do a bit of a roll off around like 80 hertz and below so i do a high pass filter and then i do a low pass filter around 18 kilohertz and above and that's just to get rid of the kind of the frequencies that you're not really going to notice that much um i also don't have the microphone turned up that loud because obviously i don't want to i don't want to bring in too much no natural noise from having this thing boosted so that's about it i usually uh for my recording and stuff i have a little bit more boosting here and i usually have a mid cut or a low mid cut around here ish but for this test i decided not to do that um and then the only other thing i'm doing is i have a little bit of compression um the only reason this is up really high is because i want to make it so that when i speak loudly as you can see there i want it to hit around the negative three mark on the uh meter here when i speak really loudly and then the other thing i have is loud max turned on and what loud max does is it allows me to boost the final output up but keep it at a relatively nice spot so it will not go anywhere above um negative 8 db which i might actually boost that to around six so basically now what it'll do is if my voice tries to go anywhere above negative six it'll start compressing 
Uh, well, not really compress it. It's just going to bring the volume down to keep it from down. So it, it's really mostly just kind of compression stuff for your sake. And then that's about it. And then I have like, a, I think this is doing like, yeah, this is just boosting the volume. So all of this stuff is just so that when it goes into OBS, uh, you guys can hear it properly. Um, so I'm really not doing too much actual EQ or anything like that. Um, I guess for the physical uh, aspect of this thing, I'll talk about the physical aspects a little bit later. I just want to get right into the audio. So like I said, I did some clean stuff. So here's a little bit of uh, me just kind of playing cleanly on my Fender Strat. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you can hear that. I, I did like three different things. Uh, there's another thing I did. I think this one was mostly just like some uh, slightly lower notes. So a lot of single note stuff there. Uh, if you're wondering what kind of EQ I'm doing, again, doing a bit of a roll off in here. I'll actually give you a uh, listen to see what it sounds like raw. So you can kind of see the curve. And if you're wondering what these effects are, I have effects on some of these things directly. And that's just for uh, basic stuff. So for this case, for the this thing, I have... Um, a uh, compressor put on it because that's what I would normally do for this kind of stuff. Again, I will let you hear it kind of without compression. And then I have loud max again over here just for volume's sake, and that's all that's for. So let's uh, play from the beginning. <laughs> I just realized I had the wrong one active there for a second. That was my bad. So this is the one for this. So you can see there overall it's bringing the volume up a little bit more, but it's also evening out the um, the kind of the, the dynamics a little bit just to make sure every note is heard really well but even without the uh compression it sounds um pretty good i think this is a, another one that i did So yeah, that brought up the, um, that, that actually brings out the reverb a little bit more on my amp. So that's basically all I'm doing there. So as you can see, not a lot of post-processing really. Like I would maybe do a little bit more. Well, not on the clean. Actually on the clean, I wouldn't really do that much. And then over here, we have some uh, gain stuff. Uh, so I have a little bit of a EQ here just because with the tone that I usually go for, and especially with the positioning, because I put this, Pretty much where I would put my SM57. So it's definitely up against kind of mostly center. Um, but yeah, I, I decided to cut 
a little bit here and here just because with uh, the way I record, it could be a little bit harsh at times. Um, I would do this on every single microphone I ever do, um, but at least this way you can see what it's doing. Now, I know that my tone's not for everyone, but you can still kind of get an idea of what this thing is doing. And I'll also show you why, that's also why I did this to get rid of some of the really harsh highs, especially since it's boot. this mic boosts the high end a bit more. Um, but let's hear what this thing's doing. Can I click, on, whatever. Hear how, how much like hissier it is. Um, and that's really just because like where I placed the microphone was in a spot that I wanted to get a little bit more of the like bigger picture. But unfortunately that means I was going to get a lot of high end that I didn't like, um, which is fine. Like that's just what I have to, you know, I can work with that. You can kind of see right here, I have that like 5K dip. I find that around 5K for guitar, like there's this little spot around there that's really annoying. <laughs> and I've never been able to record guitar without that little bit being there that if I pull it out, it just makes it a little nicer. It makes it a little cleaner sounding at times. So at least now you know kind of what's uh, going on here. Um, I think I did another thing over here. So very crunchy, uh, I was using the um, the Demon pedal, that's kind of my favorite pedal. Again, I know this sounds not for everyone. Um, I did another one here where I kind of adjusted the tone a little bit, uh, a little differently than I normally use. So uh, let's listen to this one. I actually don't have any extra processing, so it's literally just this. <laughs> And you can hear my wonderful uh, improv. <laughs> None of that was like planned out or thought out. That was just improv. Um, so you can see on this one, it's a little bit chunkier, not as much uh, in the high end. I pulled the treble down. So yeah, I know it's not for everyone. I definitely go for more of a doomy kind of sludgy sound at times. So probably not for everyone, but it gives you an idea of kind of the tone that you can expect uh, from uh, this kind of condenser microphone put for uh, guitar, um, especially in front of a guitar amp. Um, so, I I don't mind I don't mind it. It actually gives you a much rounder shape of the tone, so you're you're getting more tone from the uh, speaker as opposed to like an SM57. Now, the, the advantage of an SM57 or any dynamic microphone is I feel like you tend to get a bit more of a direct point of the tone and especially on guitars you want guitars to be a bit brighter so that especially on metal because you want it to cut through your mix really well um so that's why some of this stuff back here is a little hissier well a little hissier than i probably would leave it i would kind of tweak it a little bit just to find a good balanced spot um but sometimes it can also depend on where you place your microphone on your cabinet because that can change even a few millimeters <laughs> can honestly have a drastic difference. You'd be amazed um, how just moving the microphone a little bit, tilting it, uh, can have such a dramatic effect. Um, but a cool thing about this is you can easily put this and blend it with, say, your 58, or not 58, 57. Although you can actually use an SM58 as well, which is the standard um, 
uh, like recording microphone that you would use, like, well, not recording, a uh, stage microphone. Uh, it has a different uh, EQ curve than what a 57 has. So it actually gives you another option for you to try. But if you were to like blend in a little bit of this with a 57, like have uh, the 57 maybe on one speaker, have this on a different speaker, if you have like two speakers, uh, and then blend a little bit here and there, EQ curve, and just kind of like mix the best of both worlds since this will get a little bit more of the uh, different frequency ranges. Um, and it picks up a little differently than the 57. So it's definitely something that you can have fun kind of messing with and really playing with. Um, so I guess now really uh, the only thing I can speak about for this uh, in particular is kind of the overall build quality. Now, I don't know what this is made of, but it is very light. <laughs> it is a very light microphone. And that is being compared to, oh, here, here it is, to something like this, which is my Audio Technica uh, AT2020, which has a lot of, he which has a little bit more heft to it than this thing did. So I'm not sure if I don't drop my microphone. So I'm not sure if this microphone in particular is made out of like, a thinner aluminum or plastic, I'm not sure. It feels, it feels like plastic to me. Um, so I definitely wouldn't trust this thing like on the road, <laughs> but in a studio environment or just as like a microphone for you to use for like um, doing streaming and such, it's fine. As you can see, it comes with its own uh, shock mount stand. And the shock mount stand actually comes with its own pop filter that mounts right onto it. Um, and it can move forward and backwards. Uh, so that's really nice that you have your own pop filter. Uh, and it does a pretty good job. P -p -p uh, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. It does a decent job of getting rid of uh, plosive sounds. But um, the only thing I don't like is that this thing mounts on one spot. That I'm, yeah. This thing will only mount to one spot on the whole microphone. So the the way I have it set up right now is kind of the only way you can have it set up. You can't have it say, um, let's say you have the microphone pointing like over this way for whatever reason, this cannot move to this side, which to me is a big bummer because that kind of limits what you can do with this thing physically, like how you can mount it to something. So in the future, I would love for them to make it so that this thing clips onto the mount it's like clips onto the stand itself like here all around the ring but can clip onto the ring directly without needing a specific mounting spot um to me that would be a much better design um then you can like actually move it around um so yeah that's pretty much all you get in the box like the other the only the other thing you get in the box basically is um the packaging or not packaging the uh, user manual you get like a I'm guessing that's a warranty card and then some kind of like sticker thingy it's either a sticker thingy or is a th or it's a thank you it might be a thank you but yeah you do not get an XLR cable so you will have to get your own XLR cable and like I said this has to be plugged into an audio interface that gives off phantom power so you'll need to get that as well so if you if you've already got this kind of setup that's awesome uh, you can definitely check this thing out. Um, it's, I, I definitely think it's a pretty good mic. Like, sound-wise, from what I was able to hear myself, is really good. I would actually put it up and say it's it's pretty close to, or, like, pretty close to the um, AT2020, for the most part, in tone. Um, I'll probably continue using my AT2020 just because it's kind of the sound I already know. It's a sound I really like. And I would say that the AT2020, funny enough, the AT2020 is actually cheaper. Um, I believe the AT2020, if I check, is only like a um, hundred bucks. Yeah, right now, yeah, you can pretty much get an AT2020 pretty reliably for a hundred bucks, which is really nice. And I'm even seeing on Amazon, they have a couple deals where you can get like the microphone, a clip, uh, um, a pop filter, which clips onto a stand. And even an XLR cable for about $130, uh, 
Um, and then they have like more expensive ones that give you a mic stand and some headphones. Like there's a whole bunch of different things. This microphone by itself. Oh, it also comes with a little carry bag. I should mention that. I just, I just saw that. It, yeah, I forgot that it comes with a little carrying bag. Which is lost somewhere. <laughs> it's, it's back in the box, I think. But yeah. This setup uh, is uh, currently 135. It's currently Black Friday sales going on. I don't know how long these are going to go for, but normally it's $170. Do I think this microphone is better or worth the extra bit of money? Not really. Um, I think that the HE2020, if you can get it for $100, is honestly a better value. For the most part, it's got a sturdier build than this microphone, and it also gives you, to me, at at like at the worst, it gives you the same audio quality. I it probably I think it actually gives you a little bit more. But uh, yeah, if like if you can catch this thing on like a much bigger discount, or if you just want a different sounding microphone to go along with some of your other microphones, like like with me, I have an AT twenty twenty, but. This is not a bad option to have as a secondary microphone for doing sing uh, singing and stuff like that. It's not a bad option to have around. So let me know what you think. You've, if you've seen my other videos, you can check out a lot of my other videos to hear what my AT2020 sounds like because I've pretty much always used that as my main voiceover microphone. So you can check out some of that stuff. <clears throat> and let me know what you guys think. Uh, would you pick this thing up? You know, sound off in the comics if you think you would use this microphone and if you like the way it sounds. If you have used this microphone, let me know. I would love to know what your thoughts are on this microphone. Uh, especially if you've used it in any um, frequent frequentness. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you would like to see more of my content, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell notification to stay up to date on all my content. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Later.